welcome to this edition of Able de Nonera, the one and only program that for a long time has been focusing on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently abled in Vermont and beyond. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Lauren Seiler. And on this informative hour-long episode, we take a look into Washington County's services for the mentally and physically challenged. Before that, let's take a look at what New York was in the 1970s when Geraldo Rivera jumped over the wall with ABC News and Willowbrook State Hospital for the mentally and physically challenged. Let's take a look at this. The way to Bear Mountain is a lovely looking place called the Letchworth Village Rehabilitation Center. Set among the hills and woods of suburban Rockland County, a passerby could easily mistake the place for a country club or a college campus. But the early morning mist gave the place an eerie feeling, like a set from a horror movie. And once inside, that feeling became suddenly appropriate. Congressman Mario Biaggi had planned an official tour of the facility for 10 o'clock in the morning. But by this time, wary of what I felt were attempts on the part of the Department of Mental Hygiene to make the situation look better than it really was, my camera crew and I got there two hours before that. As the hour of the official tour approached, bundles of clothing were brought in for the children and a process of cleaning up was begun. Even so, none of these cosmetic changes could do much to improve the place. Who's in charge here, Jerry? This is Mrs. Nixon. I'm Congressman Biagi. How are you? Why are these, why are these uh, patients unclothed? We don't have enough clothing. We don't have the proper help to keep clothing on them. We have a few nudists that will not keep clothes on. They will pull them off. But most of all, we don't have the help to keep the kids properly dressed. You're talking about more money for the, for the institution. Well, that we could use because then we will have more help. Uh, how, long, how long the staff are you? Very understaffed. There are days we have four or five attendants to take care of a hundred condition in a very beautiful ground, very well built buildings. Uh, where inside we have housed uh, the children of many of our citizens who are subjected to the, what appears to be the worst possible conditions I've ever seen in my life. I've visited penal institutions all over the country. I've visited hospitals all over the country. I've visited the, the worst brigs in the, in the uh, in the military, nothing's like it. I've, I've never, never seen anything like it. About 25% of the funding for Letchworth Village comes from the federal government, and one of the requirements for continued eligibility is that there be 80 square feet of space per patient. Here, they get only 35 square feet. In the face of this terrible overcrowding, there was a ward there that stood empty because they hadn't the funds to hire the 38 people it would take to staff it. How can this be? I think well, we need 38 additional positions and we would be able to staff this area and reduce our overcrowding in overcrowded areas. That's a sin, my God, a sin. Well, we have submitted and we're expecting that we might be getting them and then we'll be able to reduce the overcrowding in certain areas. Welcome back, and to, uh, to this conversation, in this part of this hour, we have Zach Hughes, Peer Support Specialist for Washington County. Thank you. For, Thank you. For joining us on Able Done On Air. Thank you. What are the missions and goals of Washington County Mental Health? Well, uh, I have to say the mission is to, uh, to support the individuals in our community to enable them to live independent, productive lives in our community to the best of their ability. Okay. Now, when we say independent uh, to the best of your ability, what exactly does that mean in layman's terms? Well, I mean, we all want to be able to uh, go home at night and, and live our lives, right? Uh, go downtown, shop. Um, and do all kinds of things in our lives, right? Mm -hmm. So, so in order to do that uh, productively and be part of the community, even work in our community, um, 
we have to sometimes have help uh, with that, and uh, that's what our uh, organization does. Our organization believes in uh, self-determination as well with folks. What exactly is self-determination well, and being independent? Being able to, being able to do things uh, for oneself, uh, take responsibility for actions if possible, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, now, when we talk about uh, your peer advocacy, <coughs> what exactly do you do for Washington County? How does being because, um, well, you were getting services, and then now you're providing them. Um, without saying too much about your own um, <coughs> case, I mean, if you want to say, you, uh, you may. But how <coughs> does that, um, having one foot in, one foot out, how does that work <coughs> with Washington County, being the fact that you're providing services? Well, I would certainly say it's a balance but it's also a uh, asset and that the the peer uh, know, like myself knows what's going on in a sense because I go through it mm -hmm. every day and I do mean every day wake up every day um, and I get out of bed mm -hmm. uh, just like anyone else uh, as far as um, and my and I do receive uh, services so I I do work here and receive services. This is a unique arrangement. Okay, mm -hmm. does that, in certain models, in certain states, maybe that might not be the case. That's correct. But Vermont, you can get services and work for the system. Yes, okay. you could. Um, mm -hmm. In your opinion, uh, what are the misconceptions that people, in terms of mental health, what are the misconceptions of um, people with mental health challenges when they first meet them? Uh, well, I think a misconception is like a, like a movie. People are scared of somebody, mm -hmm. uh, like an axe murderer or something. Uh, they don't want them around their kids. Uh, want folks around their kids, their communities. Uh, yeah. and, and the truth is that we're just like anyone else in the community. Uh, you know, a few years ago, I challenged and said that I believe everybody goes through some sort of mental health issue. Okay, so everybody is challenged in some way. Yeah, I would challenge. No, what I'm saying is, I would I would throw out a challenge to somebody to say that I believe that everybody goes through some sort of mental health issue. Now, would you say? Well, since you mentioned. Hollywood um, and television, how do you think, um, because, uh, you know, obviously the system is broken and needs to change, but how does Hollywood or television depict good, bad, and indifferent? Uh, sometimes they depict people in a bad light. How does Hollywood and television, do you think, depict people with mental illness? or well, challenges in a sense? I would say that they depict them, uh, depending on the, the, the way I've seen it, they don't depict them the same way. I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's worse. Okay. Like How all so? the movies they make on these topics. You I see the movies, right? I, they make them I, I do see, mo yeah, I do watch movies. And I you, just You think, see, analyze this and analyze that, right? right. Robert De Niro, right. yeah. Right, but really, without mentioning <coughs> you know specific movies, I just say that mm. I really think that the, the movies sometimes do a disservice. Mm. Now, Hollywood also does a service mm. sometimes when they mm. do uh, certain movies that are based on events, mm -hmm. because that way we can see them in a better yeah. light. Mm -hmm. Take us through a typical day of or typical. Uh, yeah, a typical day or a typical week of your job of being a peer advocate. Well, I actually uh, see myself as a little bit of everything. I wear different hats. So uh, typically I'm running um, 
you know, uh, I'm co-running a peer line, which is a phone line that people mm. can call from explain. 6 p.m. to yeah, 11. Yeah, explain some of that And I'll later. explain that in a, sec a few seconds here. Um, and I also uh, also co-run the uh, Maple House uh, Peer Crisis um, Bet, um, which you'll mm. hear about a little bit mm. later here. Um, but I, I, you know, typical days basically getting different things uh, as far as, you know, what's needed out there. Mm -hmm. Um, in addition, mm -hmm. I, um, I mm -hmm. also, um, you know, serve, mm -hmm. uh, different organizations as needed, uh, in board capacities. Mm -hmm. So it's a different day for me every day. You never know what I'm going to get. It's like, yeah, a, you know. I always like to compare it to a fire station. Oh, when there's an alarm, you yeah. go to it. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so explain mm -hmm. the crisis line. Uh, it's uh, actually uh, in Vermont. Uh, well, I can ex I would, I would say that the line that mm -hmm. I uh, that I co-run is mm -hmm. actually a uh, uh, peer support line mm -hmm. or a support line. Not quite crisis, but people do call sometimes mm -hmm. in crisis, mm -hmm. and we do talk with them, and uh, we actually take calls from anywhere inside the United States at this point. So your line is your hotline is not uh, so people can understand it a little bit more it's not taking the place of 911 that's correct it's, it is not. i need someone to talk to so let me call that's is that correct. exactly that's what? correct okay um speaking of which we mentioned christ mm -hmm. okay. mental health sometimes you have crisis <clears throat> where people have What's the word? Go, go, go. Meltdown. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. nervous breakdown. Yeah. And you, you're being a peer support person. Yes. Mm -hmm. How would you be able to help someone, or how do you help in those circumstances? How can mm -hmm. you help um, in those circumstances? Well, simply mm -hmm. just being there with the person uh, is is probably the most. Um, productive approach. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I've seen a lot of workers get in there and mm -hmm. try to talk to the person, all that, but I actually mm -hmm. would like to say the most productive thing is just being there uh, for the person. That's one approach, and mm -hmm. I would just uh, say that would be my first approach would be coming in and, and looking to see what's going on. and. And um, some of my approaches, mm -hmm. the person just wants me to sit with them. They don't want me to just say, how you doing, Joe? Good to see you today. It's more of... They want you to be a good listener. They want me to be a good listener, and I think that's probably the most challenging thing. Yeah. Why do you view that as being the most challenging thing of being a good listener? Because I want to help that person. Uh, I don't... It's hard. It would be hard to explain, but I would say that I want to help fix that problem right away. Uh, initially, that's the initial thought of mm -hmm. me and other people, I think. And the idea is, wait a minute, all they want is me to listen to them, <coughs> yeah. which is helpful as well. But <coughs> I think yeah. the idea is people think that, uh, and sometimes me, that I need to fix this problem right away. Um, and maybe we could play this out a little bit. Do you mm -hmm. bring in other agencies to help you? I mean, obviously you don't, okay, obviously you're not a toolbox, you're not uh, an instant fix or, uh, or crazy glue, if I may say that, um, uh, you have to set some kind of boundaries yourself because you have a life outside That's right. of um, your job. That's right. Um, how, how... Uh, or what are the rules of being a peer advocate in terms of setting those boundaries? Because you need private time to yourself as well. Well, I would say uh, that mm. aside from... If I'm what, not asking I'm that sorry. Question. No, you're not. Uh, aside from what we call ourselves, and I use different titles um, depending on what I'm doing, peer advocacy is a little different, but... I will go with it for now. What I would like to say about the job in general, or multiple jobs in general, is that mm -hmm. you do need private time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I had someone the other day ask me, when do you take a day off? 
realize I actually do take them off, but um, it doesn't seem that way. Mm -hmm. um, but I think self-care is the most mm -hmm. important thing you can have. Otherwise, self -care. otherwise we're not going to be here. Mm -hmm. That's um, true, yeah. You know, and I and I'm gonna, you know, that people need to be able to speak up and say, "Hey, I can't keep doing it at this rate," mm -hmm. and I think that's challenging because we all want to be able to help. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, and I think mm -hmm. um, that self care is the most important thing you could do in this job, uh, aside from taking care of the uh, folks you've been asked to help uh, with and. Um, you know, and we do it, I, mm -hmm. I consider doing it as a team. I, you know, I've always taken a team collaborative approach. So when I'm involving other agencies and other services mm -hmm. in our agency mm -hmm. here at Washington County, I consider it a collaboration, which is the most important thing. Because I think uh, before we, the peer, the peer movement was seen as the enemy mm -hmm. uh, by the that? professionals. Why is that? Why was it seen as seen? Why was the peer movement seen as the enemy? Because uh, I think we were seen as we were coming in and, and interfering with the person's so-called treatment mm. at the time. And I think that now it's being seen as a valued tool. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, other states deal with things differently. That's right. Because of budget. Um, um, That's do you think there could be, in your opinion, do you think there could be more money added to mental health services to increase those services? Mm -hmm. Because there's mm -hmm. lack of manpower, mm -hmm. lack of money, lack of education. How do you view that? Well, I would like to say the other states do things differently also because of their <coughs> philosophies. Yeah. Uh, How so? And, and, well, I think that uh, just really briefly here, I just think that they're not um, they they're not well versed in the same service structure as Vermont is. Mm -hmm. Vermont is able to provide an array of independent living services and other services for folks in the community because mm -hmm. Vermont chose to do this some 20, 30 years ago, uh, almost 40 years ago now. They took a choice. And uh, I would like to say that to our legislators mm -hmm. uh, that mm -hmm. uh, we need to keep going this course. And if we end up taking, uh, you know, any cuts in services, mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about mm -hmm. going backstepping. Mm -hmm. Backstepping how uh, so, and then I'll get well, to the... I'll be uh, straight on. These, uh, mm -hmm. If we lose services, people will be going back into institutionalization. Now, I don't want that. My, uh, my fellow folks don't want that my community members don't want that because it's going to cost more money yeah it's going to yeah. so uh, <clears throat> um since we're, gonna, we're talking about <clears throat> deinstitutionalization right. we'll get to more of that in the second half of this yes. program um <clears throat> being on one's own is extremely important and you've mentioned that several times yeah. um according to the um hill county hill Hill Country Observer, which I can show here, okay? Um, homes or group homes or respite homes are models of care That's to get people in, in, in independently as, or mm -hmm. as independently as possible. Because um, this never used to be the case. People used to be in institutions, right. mm -hmm. locked away. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you had a mental challenge or, for example, back in the 1800s, if right. you were blind, deaf, uh, uh, so on and so mm -hmm. forth, you were institutionalized. Going forward quickly to Adolf Hitler, mm -hmm. bad person mm -hmm. to mention, mm -hmm. um, but uh, he killed someone who was different right. back then during euthanasia. Yes. But when we're talking about independence, we're taking people out of institutions. Mm -hmm. How do you mm -hmm. see that happening more? But more importantly... How, how do you put them back into society? How do you put them back with your job? How you put them is back there a to small society piece where so they you can, can 
they can teach uh, people you know. to put themselves back in society? I believe that uh, that our that our work uh, <clears throat> at Washington County Mental mm -hmm. Health and other service providers in general is to uh, provide that bridge into the community um, for the minimal people that we still have institutionalized. Uh, How and many I say I don't are have a well, I'll be straight with you, there's not very many. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's what makes Vermont very unique. We don't have all these institutions where we can where people go, you know, get put. We rely on our community services. This was decided a very long time ago mm -hmm. and uh, Washington County Mental Health is part of that service structure mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think our goal ultimately is to uh, continue these models of community. When we say models, mm -hmm. um, what exactly well, de is defined as a model in this case? Well, uh, what case would you be, which case are you referring um, to? Independence, for example, well, going into deinstitutionalization. I want them to go out into the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to teach them again, right? That's you have to tell them how, them to, how to get into the state. Well, get, yes, we, and we, it's, we, done, we, it's done, it's done, let's say, worst case scenario. Not worst case, but let's say they're just coming out. Their services <laughs> should be provided <coughs> as the person needs mm -hmm. what right. they need. Right. Um, and it can range. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And again, the good news is it's a very small percentage of people. Mm. Okay. But, as I said, it's relying on our current uh, community um, support uh, programs because if we lose them or lose, get cut on them, then we start heading down that other road. Like, possible. Yeah. Um, another example in terms of cutting, um, do you work... Um, at all with any veterans that uh, uh, that need peer support services? I have uh, outside the uh, outside this agency. I have worked with uh, veterans. Yes, yes. What I have. is your your Kate in terms of working with them? Um, obviously, money's being cut that way too. Yes, money's being cut every which way, but. Um, do you see veterans or people with um, PTSD situation needing more services through what you do? I see that they need support in any way that is possible. Um, it depends on their situation, to be honest. Mm -hmm. A lot of them uh, need housing and stability, mm -hmm. uh, those folks. Um, and you know, and as I said, just a person to be there to be able to mm -hmm. give them a little bit of guidance as to guidance. Yes. Um, um, okay. You're a pilot. You're giving someone the the controls to mm -hmm. guide their own life. Um, well. So basically, <clears throat> in layman's terms, <clears throat> to kind of wrap this up. Yeah. Um, a peer support person is someone to give them a roadmap to help them if they're having problems <clears throat> that's where you step mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. future goals in your opinion of washington county um where do you see the peer support program going from here well as the roadmap i still see it i still see it expanding mm -hmm. um, i think mm -hmm. that it's a valuable service um, it's not just a crisis bed pure line and anything like that. It's, it's <clears throat> folks like myself, and later you'll be meeting a gentleman by the name of Crocker. These folks who are dedicated to um, being there for folks uh, because we've already sort of been in their, been in their shoes. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to identify mm -hmm. as saying I'm mm -hmm. bending your shoes because maybe I'm not straighting your shoes but I'm sort of been in the shoe before so but the, I think expan the expansion is <coughs> is uh, you know is uh, the uh, road and I think uh, you know more things like more expansion into the the peer uh, phone lines the um, 
you know, the, cri the crisis peer beds. And, um, you know, the collaboration uh, between a designated mental health agency and the services is very much possible and valuable. Mm -hmm. um, how do we see that? Um, okay, in terms of being valuable, okay, because there's a lot of things probably that you don't get paid for that you right. do. That's right. Um, <laughs> kind of stretching yourself a little bit thin, <clears throat> but in your opinion, um, what has been the pros and cons of being a peer support person? Um, and this is like the last question. <laughs> well, what the heck? I don't have a life. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm so, well, I do have, let me just say, I do take care of myself. Is that a bad question? It's not a bad, no, it's not a bad question, Lawrence. Um, the reality is that, um, you know, I think depending on how much responsibility that a peer staff takes on, it does affect our personal lives. And I'm going to be honest. So, y you know, how dedicated we are. Because if somebody wants to be this as a career, so go on, sir. Well, I'll tell you what, if you want it as a career, please don't take anything. <clears throat> it's hard to do this, because I do it every day, but don't take anything personally. Mm -hmm. Really, and that's hard to do. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the things mm -hmm. is taking it on as a career is something you really have to look at. Uh, you know, when I first joined uh, 18 years ago, I honestly believed it was going to be a smooth, you know, I like to talk to people, so I didn't mind talking to people on the phone. It turns out I have to listen to them. Mm -hmm. So not only listen to them, I have to sit. And then after that, I have to leave that situation and go to the next situation or go home. Mm -hmm. And then what? Mm -hmm. You know, that that's where it gets really fun. And that's where you get your, you have to realize you do have a personal life outside the business, outside yeah. this work. Yeah. But when I said I don't have a life, it's, it's just how that sometimes comes into play. Well, I would, like you, I would like to thank you for joining us in this first part of this conversation uh, with um, telling us about Washington County. When we come back in the second part of this uh, conversation, we'll talk to uh, some more people from Washington County to explain how the system is broken and how we can fix it. All that and much more on Able Dead On Air. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the second half hour of this edition of Able Dead On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Alan Seiler. And on this um, hour-long edition, we have been focusing on the services that Washington County provides Vermonters in mental health and physical and mental health services. We would like to welcome Crocker Stickney and Kirk Postwaite um, of Washington County. Kirk Postwaite is the communications director and um, Mr. Stickney is the crisis bed interventionist of Washington County, or if I may say that. Um, welcome to Able Then On Air. Thanks Thank for you very us. much. Thanks for, for joining us. Um, Crocker, can you explain a little bit about, or because we have a half an hour here, um, can you explain about what you do and what uh, crisis beds mean? And sure, in, absolutely. In layman's terms. Yep. Um, well, our crisis bed is a peer-run crisis bed, which means you know there have been people who have been diagnosed with you know some sort of mental illness and they oversee some of the folks who come into our facility, which is used as sort of a respite for people who need like a break from their life or a certain situation, and they stay with us from anywhere from three to five days. Mm -hmm. um, well, like a 72-hour type of thing, holdover. Right. Um, right. Can you explain why that is? Why do they need three to five days? 
Sometimes they just need a short break from the situation that they're in, um, whether it be from a group home or maybe from the hospital. Occasionally we'll take folks from there. Mm -hmm. um, we just, we're in the business of helping people who have had similar experiences. Now, uh, uh, Mr. Postway, you, you've mm -hmm. been in the, in the public relations field for a, cu a couple of years, for mm -hmm. many years. Um, the media, is horrible sometimes in putting people in a bad light, mental health uh, challenges. How do you view the system being broken and how we can, how do you think we can fix it? Well, um, as we had discussed when we were kind of talking about the show, from my perspective and I think what we like to think at Washington County Mental Health is that, you know, what we're doing as part of the system works really well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in central Vermont here, you know, we really do our best to collaborate with other human services agencies. With, Such as whom, if you don't mind me. Uh, it could be anyone from the Central Vermont Council on Aging to um, Capstone Community Action to Downstreet Housing um, uh, Group to help people, you know, find housing. Um, just a variety of schools you know, um, the hospital, and then peer advocacy groups as well, as, as Zach was saying previously, you know, we really try and, our, our executive director, Mary Moulton, is on a mission to collaborate with other groups mm -hmm. because, you know, by doing that, you get some of the best outcomes. And um, in terms of the media and getting the story out, what we're finding is we used to really function under the uh, idea that you don't want to bring attention to, you know, the folks who were helping. Um, because Why is that? Because they want privacy, right? They don't want to have people, um, you know, necessarily judging them, uh, you know, because there is a lot of stigma still associated with people who have mental health and Can developmental you, challenges. Would you mind explaining a little bit about what that stigma is or has been? Yeah, I mean, essentially it's the idea that, you know, someone with the mental health challenge or a developmental um, disability is, uh, you know, different and therefore not someone that you can have uh, a good connection with. And, you know, I've certainly found that to not be true in my own personal life, you know, through work and, and beyond. And, you know, stigma, unfortunately, is something that puts up barriers, both for the person who might want help and for people who might want to offer them help or just you know connect with them or have a relationship. And so in many ways, it's not necessarily something that uh, um, is on purpose, mm -hmm. but it, it's out there. And the more we can talk about this and get the stories out about you know, the good outcomes that people are having by you know, seeking help and then doing what Zach and Crocker mm -hmm. are doing you know, in helping others, to you know, get through crisis situations, et cetera, uh, the more that we can have people integrated into the community, living productive, happy lives, mm -hmm. and um, you know, that's all. As Zach said earlier, that is you know a, probably the primary goal of Washington mm -hmm. County Mental Health is to uh, get people having good lives in the community. Now, certain words uh, way back when um, are not used anymore. The word retarded. Um, lunatic, lunacy, certain words in the Maybe mental yeah, health yeah. field <laughs> are not used. Um, in terms of stigma, like, like you had mentioned, um, why aren't words used anymore or why shouldn't they be, hmm. in your opinion? Well, I think just like we were talking about because in terms of stigma and the way it you know makes the person either appear to other people or feel themselves it's not helpful mm -hmm. and also no. how they identify as well you know i think if you put a label on somebody it becomes very difficult to Labels overcome are medication not yeah, yeah. right yeah. right mm -hmm. um and i feel that you know the more you're able to realize that somebody is more than their diagnosis, yeah. I think that's really important and something that. What should if they be don't encouraged. want help? Does anybody refuse help? Well, can it? How does that work? If someone needs help from Washington County, I don't want it. What is or it? or a social worker wants to get them help. And then, then I want Can a person 
does a person refuse help? How does that work, or has there been problems with that particular situation? Well, Am so I saying the wrong thing? Here? No, no, that's a good question. Yeah. That is a good question. Um, I feel that if somebody doesn't want help from Washington County, you know, they have a right to refuse it. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it, it can be challenging because you'll be in the hospital or you'll be in a group home and you'll have a case manager who's trying to help you out a little bit. Um, it can be challenging trying to navigate that and understand what the person wants as far as their needs are concerned. Okay. Now, um, you, you run a crisis bed um, facility. Correct. There's protocol. You have a screener. Mm -hmm. You have certain staff, social workers, case managers. In your opinion, well, explain what a screener does in your realm of work and how they work with the person that they're working with, and then putting together a plan to help um, get them out of the situation they're in, in terms of crisis. Well, um, typically the screeners are, are called if uh, somebody is having a really tough time um, you know, it could be in their personal life, it could be work, it could be, you know, any myriad of things, but um, they'll get a call and you'll talk to a screener who will then, depending on the individual's needs, will be evaluated and kind of placed into the correct spot, you know, that would help them the most at mm -hmm. that given point in time. Mm -hmm. um, now, they can only go into that crisis bed for three to five days. Has there ever been a situation where they had to stay longer or they're not allowed to stay longer? We, ha we have been a little flexible with that. Um, if people, you know, if they're trying to find housing or if they're, you know, trying to just move out into the community, we have been able to let them stay a little bit longer if need be or shorter depending on what their needs are. Mm -hmm. Now, there's such thing as, um, in terms of the apartment situation, living on one's own, mm -hmm. which is really important. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, what types of of support services, in terms of Washington County psychiatric or other services, can a person get through? Washington County, like living on one's own is real important. So explain yeah. that independency. Yeah, or that independence. Well, you know, if, so right. We support people through our community support program, which is for adults with more persistent mental health challenges, mm -hmm. uh, through our community developmental services program, which is for people with developmental mm -hmm. uh, disabilities, um, and uh, the range that is in that group. To live independently, either on their own or potentially in a, a home with someone who's kind of a live-in provider. How does a live-in provider do? Well, it depends, but um, you know, it could be someone who opens their home up mm -hmm. to uh, another person to come live with them, and you know, they help them with their daily living, you know, mm -hmm. potentially provide some transportation. Now now, does the, the and when they're ready, right? Are they, are they ready enough to live on their own? Well, that's right. It could be a stepping stone. Some people may want to live with someone else, you know, for their whole life, and yeah. because they just need that level of support, and and that's okay. Um, some people do end up moving. It's a stepping stone, and they move to more independent living, either through living with one other person or in a group home, as Crocker had mentioned. Um, but then, once a person is living on their own, you know, we could offer them case management services, so someone to check in with them in a consistent way to say, hey, what's going on, how you doing, uh, you know, to kind of make sure that they're um, working within the treatment plan that everyone's agreed mm -hmm. is going to help keep them well, mm -hmm. uh, you know, connecting them to other groups in the community uh, that they may want to be part of and that might be beneficial to them, you know, and then anything from transportation to, you know, get into their doctor, their primary care doctor's office, just really kind of uh, helping them with daily life. Like, you know, Zach was saying, having people living in the community, enjoying their life, living as independently as they can, 
but not being isolated. You know, I think that typically is a, is a, a goal is to make sure people aren't mm -hmm. feeling isolated, feeling cut off, because that's a, you know, a pretty cut consistent. Cut off in terms of how? Just that isolation can be a consistent mm -hmm. symptom of, you know, mental illness, if you will. And that, you keep it all bottled up. Yeah, you, and not getting, not getting supported, not having those connections with other people to either help them talk through a, a challenge or just live their life and have yeah. a, you know, a connection. Question which comes to mind um, in terms of the independent living. If, if someone goes to live with someone for like a home share situation, mm -hmm. let's say, mm -hmm. in terms of Washington County, does that person who is opening their home to someone with a mental health or physical situation, does that person get trained through Washington County or some type of in service to say, okay, we're, we're, we're bringing this person, this is what they have, this is their medical situation, um, this is what you do, or how does that work? Yeah, you know, I don't have a lot of specific details, but certainly... I'm sorry to bring that. Well, no, that's okay, because I would say yes. I mean, we want to make sure that a home that someone goes into... Is safe. Is safe and, uh, you know, has people who kind of understand, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, the needs of the person who's going to move in there and can, you know, support them as best they can. And that, you know, could be us offering the support. It could be uh, certain state departments offering some of the trainings and mm -hmm. ongoing support. So, yeah. But we, yeah, want to make sure that, you know, a home that someone moves into is uh, ready to make sure they can help. And if it's not, how can they make it ready? So yeah, I think maybe pursuing, you know, making sure that that person does do some training. Um, and, you know, it would be based on the needs of the individual who was moving in uh, as much as possible. Now, crisis situation, which comes to you. Um, lack of manpower has been the problem, or lack of money has been the problem for years, no matter what state you live in. I know Vermont is doing a great job, but how do you, how can we, uh, uh, or if anybody from any legislators are watching this program, how can um, we say to them, how can we change to get more funding, or how do you see it, um, what's the word about? How, how, how can we word it where, we need more funding for this type of service through Washington County. Well, because um, <coughs> crisis intervention is important. It crisis is. beds yeah, are it's, important. It's very important. There's lack of yeah. beds, lack of manpower. Yeah. Go ahead, sir. I I feel that there's a you know especially in our field there's a fair degree of turnover as mm -hmm. well. Which can, why is that? Well, because there are some challenging. Um, scenarios that some of our case managers have to deal with mm -hmm. um, and I feel if we could find more resilient employees I feel like it would be beneficial for the company and at the same time advocate for mm -hmm. more funding for our programs as well because there is a problem related to you know not enough beds being available to the mental health community mm -hmm. Um, now I notice here. How, how many beds do you have? How many beds? Yeah. Okay. Our our facility has two beds. Oh. So is this this is the Maple House, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So, um, two beds, not a small facility. But there's more staff, or how does that work? Well, we've got five people on staff. Um, it's I'd rather not say their names at this time. Sure, but, no um, problem. We do have five people on, on my team that I oversee, and they oversee um, two beds. One is the Maple House bed. Mm -hmm. The other is the transitional bed, which is more geared towards people who are homeless and need a longer stay mm -hmm. um, to stabilize and hopefully integrate back into the community. Okay. Integration. Explain integration back into the community. Well, um, if they have, you know, certain difficulties, they're able to use some of the resources provided by Washington County Mental Health to try and, you know, get 
your own housing, be able to provide yourself, look for jobs, for work, you know, just basic things that, you know, people should um, be able to have to lead a productive and, you know, somewhat normal life. In your opinion, why are people, um, or what are the misconceptions around people with um, mental challenges that people might be scared of uh -oh. dealing Sorry. with um, that? Um, well, I think there's a lot of stigma, like Kirk was talking about beforehand. Um, I've, I feel like there's a lot of stigma around people with mental illness. You know, there's this general assumption that they're crazy or, you know, you shouldn't talk to them or, you know, any, any myriad of things. And I feel that the media especially doesn't help with that. Um, Your opinion, sir, on that same question? Yeah, I mean, I think um, that that's a pretty accurate take on it is that, you know, there's, there's a lot of preconceived notions I think that people have, and unfortunately, it's based on a lot of this, you know, what we were talking about with stigma, mm -hmm. that there's information being put out, um, you know, that, that may apply to a very small percentage of people, but that, in fact, most people with mental health, um, you know, want to be connected with other people. Mental health challenges, we all have mental health, right? Yeah. You know, want to be connected, um, you know, strive towards what we call recovery, which is having an experience of a mental health challenge getting better and reintegrating into life and, you know, a, a community-based life with friends and family. And, uh, you know, for instance, with, you know, a lot of the media attention right now on gun violence, yes. uh, there's discussion about, you know, uh, mental health being the prime component of that potentially. And th the numbers just don't bear that out. Literally, just the data shows that a very explain small, a little bit about that, sir. So, a very small percentage of people who have you know been involved with gun violence on the mass level, um, you know, that we're kind of focusing on now, had any sort of a, a mental health diagnosis. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, um, I've got a, a little information here that, you know, I just read a quote last night that. Um, said there's really no connection between an individual with a mental health diagnosis and mass shootings. That connection, according to all experts, doesn't really exist. Mm -hmm. And that was from someone who um, works at the Baselin Center for Mental Health Law. Is that through Washington County? Or it's not. I mean, that was a, you know, a, some data I got off, uh, you know, doing some research on the internet. But essentially, you know, someone typically with a mental health challenge is 10 times more like to, likely to be the victim of a crime than to perpetrate a crime. How, how so in terms of being a victim, sir? Well, I, you know, just the vulnerabilities of maybe being isolated uh, from a support system, um, you know, being, um, you know, less likely to be able to defend themselves uh, in a variety of ways. I guess the main point I'm trying to make is oftentimes, you know, the media um, and, and messaging out in the media, not just the media, but messaging out in the media that gets picked up is that you should be afraid of someone with a mental illness. That you should be afraid. Yeah, and, and in fact, I mean, that is not what I've experienced in the, you know, 15 years I've been in the field. I mean, are there crisis moments? Yes. You know, do pe people sometimes become unsafe? Yes, but it's a minority of mm -hmm. the time. And, you know, the majority of people, with, as I was saying, with a mental health challenge or a developmental disability or using substances, for that matter, you know, want to seek help, want to get better, want to be well. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think that's just a big part to be emphasized is that education in the community, you know, letting people find out about how they can be supportive versus having that initial reaction to be afraid of someone else can really go to towards making our communities stronger. And the stronger our communities are, the more embracing they are of everyone, the yep. less likely people are to feel isolated and to therefore feel desperate enough to potentially you know, do something that is harmful to themselves, right, or others. As, as far as crisis, like you said, being, being uh, um, harmful to oneself, um, in terms of alternatives to medication because you, you know medication is a big part of mental health mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. um, 
in terms of what Washington County provides, what are some alternatives to medication regimens that you guys might be able to shed light on, mm -hmm. if any? Yeah. You want to speak to that? Yeah, sure. Um, well, we kind of look at medication as being a part of the necessity to be well. We don't, you know, we do do med witnessing. Um, we How do does, help hey, people. Yeah take their meds if need be but we don't you know it's not it's not a cure-all if you will you know we feel like recovery you know well if you need medication if you need medication it's part of part of recovery but it's not you know the the main focus mm -hmm. of of what a person is going through and we we you know we do the best we can to listen to folks and really kind of work with them and and try to coordinate so that they can, you know, live productive lives. Okay. Yeah. Um, what are some future goals that Washington County um, might have or is going to have or um, new things? Or? Kirk, I think you can answer that. Well, I, yeah. one thing I would say is uh, as an agency, we were just uh, chosen to receive a uh, designation as a center of excellence by the Vermont Care Partners, which is kind of our statewide um, group that represents all the various designated agencies across the state, and specialized services agencies, which typically focus on just working with people with developmental um, disabilities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, you know, that was a really big honor for us. Mm -hmm. And when I was thinking about this, I thought, well, that's kind of what we want to do in the future is to continue to move into that realm of being and continuing to be a center of excellence. And I'll just quickly read something because it, it sums it up. It's just that a center of excellence mm -hmm. is a great place to get care and a great place to work. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an organization um, that's an integral part of the overall health neighborhood, meaning, you know, the hospital to the home health hospice, you know, um, agency to the mental health agency to schools, you know, kind of mm -hmm. making sure everybody's connected and talking mm -hmm. to have a real strong community-based uh, web of services, network of services. Mm -hmm. And it really looks at whole person care, you know, supporting resiliency and recovery um, and looking for really good outcomes. I mean, I, we are focused on that, you know, we... I, I'm happy to work here. I think it's a it's a wonderful place to work. Washington County Mental Health that is, and you know, working with guys like Zach and Crocker and just you know all the um, other people I work with. There's a lot of people who have really committed to working here, and despite the workforce uh, struggles that we do experience, which have to do with what mm -hmm. Crocker was talking about, there are a lot of people who've worked at this. Um, agency for 10, 20 plus years, and I think that speaks to the fact that you know people really love the work they do. And the last question is, why is there a high turnover of um, people that um, are working in this field and are not anymore, uh, and should be still? I mean, mm -hmm. you, you know, why is there a high turnover of um, people working? Well, I think there's, um, you know, there's not one definitive answer to that. I mean, uh, you know, in this field, you know, you've got to be in it because you enjoy doing it and you enjoy seeing people succeed and mm -hmm. helping them kind of along their ha their path to recovery. And that being said, you know, recovery looks different for everybody. So, um, but just trying to to understand that, you know, you want to help people move forward, but there are limits to what you can do as a, as a case manager or... Explain real quick some of those limits that might, in terms of your position as crisis bed person. Well... Uh, um, stepping back or boundaries or what? Stepping back and having boundaries are really important in, in this field. Um, and to be able to establish those boundaries is important as well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but why, why is there boundaries that have to be set? I mean, why do you think, in your opinion? Just to maintain professionalism in the, in the field. Mm -hmm. So, uh, sir, in your opinion, why is there boundaries set with working with certain folks? Yeah. 
Yeah, well, I think just if what, I'm not saying too much or no, that's great. I think just what Crocker said. I mean, I think within the context of this work, uh, you want to set boundaries to model them. You know, for other folks who may struggle with mm -hmm. having boundaries. In other words, respecting another person's time or their space, even. Um, you know, and that is it's important within this work because you. I was just thinking when you were saying what you your answer was, Crocker, that you have to have grit yeah. in this work because it's hard, right? The day to day of it can be kind of difficult, and you know, because uh, yeah. you know, it's not a straight uphill trajectory of recovery. Sometimes it's up and down, mm -hmm. so you have to look mm -hmm. at the long term, and you have to be flexible, right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. what you know we may want for the person doesn't always materialize in the way we thought it did, but as long as we're being supportive to what they want, mm -hmm. you know, that's really key in helping them in those moments when it's difficult. And I did want to just say about the, the you know, the difficulty with keeping a, a consistent workforce um, is it's a difficult job. I mean, this is not always easy yeah. work. Yeah, there are great returns, but it's hard. You know, the day-to-day -day of it can be hard. So, um, you know. It's not a high-paying job. And that. And, and the, the, the other piece of that is, you know, it's not a high paying job. And, you know, here at Washington County Mental Health, they're taking some really great steps, you know, with the board support and our leadership to do everything we can to pay people a wage that will allow them to stay so they don't have to work two other jobs or that they don't necessarily go work for another place that can pay them more. And so we're, we're kind of in a real consistent struggle with finding a way to get funds allocated to us that will allow us as an agency with all the community knowledge and structures in place to them, you know, get people embedded into those positions and pay them so that they are, you know, feel respected and can do the, the difficult work that's in front of them to then ultimately make the communities healthy right. and okay. well. Right. Well, I would like to thank you both for joining us Thanks, on this edition of Able Dead on Air. <coughs> um, for more information on uh, mental health, um, uh, what is the number that you, uh, for Washington County Mental Health that they can uh, yep. contact you guys? It's 229-0591. Or you can also visit us at www.wcmhs.org. Would you mind repeating that one more time? www dot wcmhs dot org or visit us on Facebook. Okay. Well, I would like to definitely like to thank you for joining us on this important uh, edition of Able Dead on Air. Stay tuned for the next episode. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you <clears throat> next time.